what did we do? I whispered this frantically to Mike the day our second son was born as we watched our firstborn son standing at the door crying. He was two years and 10 months old at the time. People always ask toddlers who are about to get a new sibling, are you excited about the baby? But I never prepared my son to answer that question the way people want toddlers to answer that question because the fact is no toddler is excited about that. You may think they are, but that's just because you've told them to be. No toddler votes to share their parents with a small, shriveled, whiny need machine who poops and pees around the clock and holds the prized position at mom's breast. We prepared our firstborn for the arrival of his new sibling practically because I was having a home birth and we wanted him to be prepared in case he witnessed it. And witness it he did from his high chair while eating granola. True story but we didn't really place any emphasis on him preparing to adore a seven pound ball of need because honestly, it's hard to prepare for that as an adult, much less as a toddler. When the baby came, labor was very swift and he was pretty content as newborns go, as long as I nursed him every two hours round the clock. Firstborn was recently weaned, so it's not like he was jealous of not having time at the breast. In general, he didn't seem to want anything to do with the baby, and that was fine. He didn't act out, he didn't tantrum, he was a very even-tempered child. He gets that from his father. But what he did do is he waited by the front door for what seemed like a span of weeks, waiting for someone who wasn't us to come play with him. He clearly did not want to play with us, and we assumed it was because we had brought an intruder into his home. He wanted someone who had not betrayed him to play with him. At least that's how I saw it. What did we do was not really a question for Mike. It was a guilty declaration masquerading as a question. We ruined our firstborn's life. We messed it up. We took something that was perfect and we made it imperfect. I just adopted a special needs kitten. She was born without a chest muscle and she had to have surgery to separate her sternum from her rib cage. I already have an eight year old cat at home as well as two eight month old kittens. They love me so much. They love our life. Everything is perfect. The eight year old isn't so crazy about having two rambunctious eight month olds running circles around her, but we've all figured it out. Everything's great. I know that by adopting this special needs kitten, I am saving her life and giving her a safe, loving place to live. And I am sure that the eight month old kittens will be fine with her eventually. And I'm sure that the eight year old cat will just look at her and kind of avoid her, but that'll be fine eventually too. But I worry that I won't be. I have carried the weight of having a second child into my life as a cat mom. This must have been stuck inside of me waiting to be confronted. Like, what if your love isn't infinite? What if you ruin someone's life because of your need for more? What if you were wrong? And now the universe has given me the opportunity to understand this much more completely. What are my sons like now? Exceptionally close. Firstborn guards his brother with a tenderness I've literally never seen in my life. Secondborn lives to stroke his older brother's arm to fall asleep. They don't fight. They don't really do much more than bicker a little bit here and there. They're both unbelievably reasonable and loving with each other. And a lot of that has to do with genetics, mostly their fathers. <laughs> but there are times when my firstborn gets overwhelmed or annoyed or feels responsible for the actions of his little brother. And he gets frustrated. And he sometimes half jokes that maybe it wouldn't have been so bad to be an only child. And this hurts me so much. And I cry inside, but I don't let him see it because it's not his job to take care of those feelings for me. I don't need him to know how hard my relationship was with my brother or how much his father and I want him to value this and treasure it because God only knows how much time we have together. Your brother is everything. We want him to know that. And when our firstborn wanted someone to play with him that day his brother was born, it would have been so easy to just say, we're right here, we're playing with you. Cut it out, stop crying. Instead, we let him cry and we held him through it. And we returned to him again and again with love and with patience and with the ability to hold his hard feelings as well as his easier ones. I don't tell him he's lucky to have a brother because he may not always feel like that. And I don't tell him to be grateful because he may not be ready for that. I tell him that we love him and that our love is infinite and that it grows to fill the hearts of both of our sons because it cannot be contained. And when it's dark, and that little guy is snoring and my firstborn and I can't sleep 
and we share a giggle because we're glad that we don't snore like Dada and like the little brother, I hold my firstborn close and I remind him that it will always be us, even when it's more than us. And on the nights when my boys sleep at their dad's and I'm alone, I share my bed with cats, with feline creatures who cannot complain or speak or giggle, but they feel and they need me. And they give me the opportunity to show that indeed, my love is infinite and without end. It fills the hearts of any who are open to receiving it without end. Cats. Oh. Did you like that one? I like that one. If you like that one, there's more where that came from. Subscribe and check out these links. Woohoo! Videos.